Good afternoon, a contact webinar using technology to support forum activity. Um, my name is Ruth Hobbs and I'm the director of Somerset Parent Care Forum um, and the chair. We were supposed to be joined this morning by Tina Emery, but unfortunately she is on a train currently, so is unable to join us. So um, one of our representatives has come to join us instead, so I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hello, I'm Rachel and I'm a parent rep. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is if there is a technical hitch, just please hang on and bear with us and we'll get it sorted. If you're joining by your PC, laptop or tablet, you should now be able to see the introduction slide. What you'll probably find with this webinar different to other webinars that you might have done in the past is that we're going to be um, flicking between the presentation and also live onto the website. Um, so just bear with us because that may take a few seconds to go across from one to the other. Um, there are a lot of attendees today, so we're going to keep everybody muted throughout. But if you want to ask a question, then just use the icon um, as shown on the slide there, and that will allow you to type into the text box, and then that will come through to us via email. Okay, and then if we have any questions that we can't cover in the time, then what we'll do is we'll make sure that those are answered, um, or if they're more technical that need a, a bit more time, we'll answer those, and they'll be posted up with a webinar, which will be circulated next week. And make sure at the end that you remember to do the questionnaire that will come through to you. Okay, so forums. We all know that it is a balancing act in the forum. Um, lots of different things that we have to do on a daily basis. So we have the <coughs> attracting parents to come and join us and support the forum work. So the bit where we're looking for volunteers. Once we've got those volunteers, it's the supporting them, making sure that we keep them active um, and provide them with what they need. We then have all our surveys that we do for members and consultations and the amount of time that that takes up. Emails, that sort of is what my email box looks like at the moment. Um, just the amount that we get for such a variety of reasons. After our emails, we've also got calendar and meeting requests. Then we've got a large geographical area for some of us to cover. So um, for us, particularly in Somerset, it's about three hours drive from one side of our county to the top end of our county. So we're covering a massive range there. We've also got all our memberships, all our parent carers. Um, and then on top of that, our own family life that we're trying to juggle as well as parent carers. So I think it's pretty fair to say that we're all really busy. So what we're going to do is have a little look at how we can use technology to support us. I think you'll all agree sometimes it feels a bit overwhelming and we're not quite sure how we're going to juggle everything so the webinar really is going to focus on how we can use technology to support us and how we can use that to make best use of our time we're going to look at all the different areas that we've just talked about in the previous slide and what technology there is that forums up and down the country are using um, to help them really to manage that <clears throat> so the first area we're going to look at is emails so I think most forums will agree that we seem to have a growing number of emails. Um, lots of different reasons, whether that be requests for involvement, whether that's um, feedback from families, families contacting us for information, um, meeting requests, all sorts of things that come in all the time. And, in, and involved with that is all the attachment that goes with it. So we know that we have, um, particularly around meetings, we have all the agendas, the minutes, the millions of presentations it seems to come with it and then we have to consider around our gdpr compliance as well so that's an issue for forums um, there's lots of different apps and email accounts that you can use out there that are all free so if you look in the top corner we're giving you an idea of some of them you've got gmail yahoo um, as a forum we've chosen to use outlook uh, the reason being that it enables us to have a calendar and uh, that's attached to it but also it allows us to have um, storage space included with our emails. One of the things that a lot of forums have said have helped them is to make sure that they have a separate email from their personal account, um, having a central email box, having storage that comes with that, and there's various reasons for this. So with the separate email account from your personal one, that will help you to be able to manage your time and to be able to separate home life, hopefully, from forum life. Um, the central email box is something that we have found particularly helpful, and I know other forums have as well. So instead of meeting requests going to 
one you know go individuals they actually come into one box and then they're allocated from there and the reason that helps is that as parent carers we we all know what it's like you know something crops up all the time doesn't it like tina being stuck on a train um so things don't always go quite according to plan but having that one central point means that there's always somebody who can pick things up um, and if all the meetings come into one place, then if somebody is off, there is a the possibility of then changing and getting somebody else to cover that. Storage, so really for all those attachments, all your minutes, a lot of forums now are going, um, getting less and less paper-based, so actually having free storage is really important. Using things like automatic email responses for when the forum's closed, when it's the holidays um, and to provide that information about how long you're going to be off and and what to do in the meantime so for example with ours when we're closed over the holiday period we put a note on explaining that we're closed and we also signpost them to other organizations that are um, if it's a family that can help them and auto signatures just to save a bit of time so you don't have to continually have to keep typing the same thing over and over again um, the other advantage to having separate emails from your personal emails is around the issues around subject access requests so we know that there have been forums that have been subject to these where people have basically asked to see what data is held um, on them that becomes more and more tricky when people are using their own individual emails so all of our forum representatives all have an spcf email and that's the way that we communicate about anything that connects is connected to the forum what I would say is make sure that you manage your emails really well. Um, delete whatever you don't need to keep. So if you've got an email, think about it. Do I actually need to keep this or not? And if you don't, get rid of it because it will make it a lot easier if you do end up having to deal with a subject access request. So one of the things that we've been talking about this morning, actually, Rachel and I, is the sheer volume of meeting requests that we are getting at the moment. So how do you track that? How do you make sure that everybody's got the information that they need to be able to go to those meetings? We've got to balance um, the requests with the fact that we also need to uh, support our representatives, our parents that are going to these meetings to make sure they've got all the information that they need, agendas, minutes from previous meetings, any presentations. So how do you do that? How do you manage that? Well, there's lots of different calendars that you can use, and lots of them are free. So there's Outlook, there's Google, there's Apple, different ones. You just need to literally Google free calendars and you'll find loads. We've chosen in Somerset to invest in um, an app called Team Up, and that enables us to provide the support that we want to to our reps. And we're going to go and have a look at that in more detail. Right, we're going to attempt to go into a live session now so I can show you the calendar. So hopefully now you'll be able to see what this looks like. You can see how busy we are this week. Um, this is the standard calendar for the forum. As you can see over here on the left hand side, we've got all our different forum representatives and our different calendars. So we have a different one for support groups. Um, we have one which is for the regional meetings and then all the different representatives. And what I'm gonna do is just take you into um, one of the calendar events to show you what it's able to do. Now there's free options of this, and then there's options that you need to pay for. So the op we've paid um, about 300 pound a year for our team up calendar, but that provides us with up to 50 email um, calendar accounts, which means that we can cover everybody that is supporting the forum work, um, and also means that we can cover the regional. So I'm just gonna take you through and show you one of the events. So I'm going to pick on this one up here, which is the National um, AGM, which we've got coming up in November. So as you can see, this is logged in as one of our regional ones so that everybody in our region can look at it. We've got the address of where it's taking place. We've got the dates. If it isn't an all day event, you'll also be able to put the times in. And we've got the address of where it is. So you can click on that and it will take you to a map which will show you exactly where the event is taking place and that's really helpful this is um friendly for using on the phone if you've got google phone or you've got an android or you've got a apple phone there's apps for both um, you're also able to upload information 
So we've been able to put the link on there for the conference and all the details that's on the NMPCF website. And we've also been able to link the booking form. And if I click on this, hopefully it'll work. It will download me a copy of the booking form. So you can go in and you can make your bookings. So as you can see, it allows you to do a lot. Now, obviously for us, that also means that we can upload any presentations for meetings. We can upload agendas. We can upload meeting notes. We can also upload feedback from the previous meeting that we've received from um, the previous person that's gone. And that's really helpful if we're in a situation where we have a representative say, you know, child's gone down sick, which happens. Um, we can then just reassign that by reassigning it to somebody's calendar and they've instantly got all the information. And I can literally do that from home by just a couple of clicks. Um, saves a huge amount of time rather than me having to go through, find all the attachments, find all the details, send them out to the person via email. Then they've got to try and get to an email um, and to log in. Whereas this way, they literally can look at it on their phone um, and they can see it straight away. So if we go back to the slide, there you go, that's the form downloaded. Um, you will see this is what you get on your phone. So if you were to look at it from your phone, this is what you would see. Um, each representative can have their own calendar. So for example, when Rachel gets her meetings, you only see your calendar, don't you, Rachel? Um, so this is Rachel over here in grey. Um, so she only gets her meetings and we can filter out as to how many people we want to have access. It's also quite good for sharing with other organisations if they want to try and find a time to book into your calendar, because you can send them the calendar, but without any details in. So they just see blocks of colour where you're not available. So that works quite helpfully. OK, so once you've gone to your millions of meetings, the next bit is about collecting feedback, um, how to do that effectively. Um, obviously, it's really important for us as forums to make sure that we are collecting feedback as part of our grant work. We need to be able to do that, but also to be able to follow through on themes. Um, think about how you can share with the person attending for the next meeting. So, for example, if Rachel went to a meeting this week and then was on holiday, because she is allowed a holiday, um, for the next meeting, how can you share the information across? Also look at how you can provide a variety of methods. So I think it's important to remember that one method is not going to work for everybody. Um, different representatives like to feedback in different ways. So we try to have different um, options for that. So we provide the various options that are there. So we've got verbal feedback. So if um, somebody doesn't want to do a written form, that's fine. They can phone in and they can talk to one of us and give uh, feedback verbally. We use jot forms, which I'm going to go and show you in a minute. I know you're probably all rocking because we actually associate those with the grant monitoring and the grant application, but you can use them for other things. Uh, we have a secret Facebook page, which we use to feedback, and that's quite good because that's quite instant. Um, and we have a messenger group. We also have a WhatsApp, which we've dedicated just for when we get the Ofsted call. And we also use video chats, although they don't always go quite according to plan. And I think the good thing about that is that you have the option of using any of those um, and people can dip in and out, which is, is quite helpful. It also means that you're not relying on one person to give feedback. So we're just going to have a quick look at the job for a minute. So this is our form that we have got for representatives. So if they go to a meeting, this enables them to feedback. It's all preset out and then they can just add in the bits that they need to. So it includes the date, title of the meeting, who attended, um, who else was at the meeting, overview of the meeting. And then one of the things that we do include is an area for anything that needs to be confidential. So if we sh anything is shared with us that we is not ready to go out in the public domain. And then we ask our representatives to rate their level of engagement. And this is really effective for us because this enables us um, to look at the meetings and actually find out which are the best meetings for us to be attending. So if we, for example, were getting a meeting come back and the feedback continually was that it was tokenistic, that there wasn't any engagement and it was a bit of a tick box exercise, we would then be able to say, actually, is this the best use of our time? Because we all know we have very limited time as, as forum and we use, need to use it as most effectively as possible. 
So that's the drop form that we use. I'm going to attempt to show you the Facebook page. We will look at this a little bit more in detail in a little bit. So we also have a closed group, which is where we discuss um, different bits and pieces. So you can see, checking who's coming to the steering group tomorrow. Um, and this is where we've got all our documents as well that people can go into. The good thing about this is that it allows everybody to have conversations about meetings. So if you have had a particularly tricky meeting, um, it allows you to go on there and say, actually, this is what's happened. How can I handle this next time? This is what I did. And it just gives people an opportunity to talk through things. It also means that if you are a chair of the forum, you're not constantly the one that is picking up all of those conversations, but actually representatives get to talk to each other and support each other. And that's really important because it's important that you're growing your forum and making preparing for when the day that you leave. Rachel's now rocking in the corner that I've said that. Um, but it is important to, to give people that opportunity. And also we all view things differently and we've all got different experiences by it. So through that shared knowledge, then we're in a much better position to support one another. All right, I'm going to get this back up. OK, so volunteering. When we talk about volunteers, we talk about the fact a lot of the time that we need to recruit volunteers um, and that can be quite challenging for forums. But we also need to think about the fact that we need to, once we have got the volunteers, we need to support them and we also need to connect them up with other volunteers so they feel part of the team. So what we're going to do is have a quick look at what Swindon have done. So uh, Swindon Send Families Voice have been formed now for about a year, just over a year. Um, and they had their um, Ofsted inspection. And that meant that they ended up with a written statement of action for their area. And that meant all of a sudden there was lots of more meeting requests. It was busy as it was, but then um, went slightly mad is what I was told uh, for meeting requests. So they created this graphic, which they've used to um, talk to local parents, to get parents involved. And it's been really positive. They've shared it through their social media. They've been really clear about what they're offering and what they expect. Um, and they've had really positive results. So the first time it went out for advertising, they got seven new people to go to meetings. And the second time round, um, they got an additional four. So they've had 11 new representatives in quite a short period of time. And that's been really important for them to be able to, ex to cope with the volume of work that's come from that written statement of action. OK, so support for volunteers. Um, so I showed you very briefly the Facebook page that we've got. That is really helpful because for us, it um, encourages everybody to work as a team allows us to share the knowledge that we've got so some of us have more knowledge in education or social care or health we don't all have come from the same background and um, we've all had different um, experiences uh, i think it's fair to say as well in somerset the experiences are different in different parts of the county so having the spread across the county is quite helpful um, it allows us also to manage meetings. So, for example, when we get a request in, we tend to put them in the group and ask who's available to attend those meetings and then they get allocated. Um, place to compare. So you've had a meeting, you've gone to a meeting, you get a good meeting, you get a bad meeting, you get a disastrous meeting. Um, this group really has allowed us to be able to have those conversations and actually it's quite good in the sense if someone is in a meeting and can't respond then there's usually somebody to pick up um, and to feedback and it might be a case of literally someone goes on and says I'm at a meeting someone has said x I'm not sure that's not what the feel I'm getting from parents how's how does everybody else feel about this and then that allows us to pull back that feedback um, provides all the links for feedback or the links for um, representatives to be able to access documents um, and provides a uh, safe space. So somewhere that reps can talk um, away from uh, anybody else and just have those open conversations. Um, also, we've used it quite a lot just recently as a working room. So when we'd be doing work on documents, um, we share documents, people then can feedback and that's really important because you do when you're working on documents you do get to a point where you've read them so many times that you just can't see any mistakes so that's quite helpful and that that's good for people to be able to check but also 
um, for public statements. Uh, we've recently had a situation in Somerset where they've changed the criteria for autism diagnosis um, and ADHD diagnosis. And that just suddenly hit, uh, very, came very public very quickly. And we needed to create a statement as a forum to explain what the forum's views are, what had happened, you know, what parents were telling us. So that was a really good space because we could use the room to edit and get that statement right um, before we put it out into the public. When you're writing public statements, you can write something and read it and think, oh, this is what it means. But then somebody else can read about can't they reach and it means something totally different to them so it's actually quite good as a sense check and um, so we use that all the time um, to do that the other thing that we we found it very helpful for is that as a cic and as a steering group if you've got to make decisions about finance um we obviously recall uh, most forums have a limit as to how much they can spend before it needs to be a uh, vote We've had situations where in the summer holiday, our admin person's been working and the computer's decided to blow up. Um, obviously, when people are on holiday, you can't call a steering group meeting. People don't always have access to their emails, but most of our representatives and our steering group have access to Facebook. So we can record decisions on there. So we can go on and say, this is the situation. These are our options, please vote. And then you've got a permanent record that that was a, a shared decision amongst the committee. So you can also use it in that sense as well. OK, so we've looked at how you can use technology around your internal structures um, and how to support that organisational side of the forum. But what we're going to do now is switch slightly and we're going to look at how technology can support you in keeping in touch with members. So membership. Um, it's can be very challenging to keep on top of your membership. Lots of forums have struggled around the new compliance, around the new GDPR issues. Um, and that's caused a lot of uh, forums to look again at what platforms they use. So there's lots and lots of marketing out there, lo lots of platforms that you can use to manage your membership. I would strongly suggest you need to consider the benefits of a free membership um, versus those that charge. What are you actually getting for your money? Um, is it something that you need to spend the money on or not? There's a lot of free apps out there, a lot of free management systems. Um, check whether your, perform, your platform is actually compliant with GDPR. So we have uh, been using MailChimp and obviously when the new regulations came in, we were a little bit nervous about whether that complied with the, the EU rules, um, but it does, even though it's based in America. So it's important just to check that. Um, other things to check, can your sign up forms be linked to your website and your social media to maximise the use? Um, do they have apps? Are they web based? How are they actually going to work? So, for example, the reason that we chose to go with MailChimp is that there is an app for iPads. So we've just had an event this weekend where we've signed up uh, about 15 new members. Um, no paperwork at all. So we've literally gone in with an iPad. People have signed up there and then. The details are instantly uploaded to a secure um, cloud where they're stored. That then enables us not to have to worry about um, paperwork, losing anybody's paperwork. We don't have to worry about the GD compliance side because the person, as part of it, is giving consent in the form. Um, it's not a case of somebody then has to make sure that they're securely, all details on paper were securely uh, locked away before it gets back to the office. It also allows people the option to unsubscribe without you having to actually do any huge amounts of admin. Um, and it's linked to our um, newsletters. So we can instantly send newsletters out through that. So that's just one option. There's lots and lots out there. So you can go and have a look at what the options are for free. Um, in addition to that, uh, you've also got around the database and how to manage that. So as long as you, what you need to think about is the GDPR side and ensuring that you are compliant. So if you decide that you're going to go for a database, then you need to make sure that you can include people that are postal. So one of the downsides with um, MailChimp is that we can't add in postal only members. So we have a database which tracks all of those that just want to have um, either social media contact, text messages, 
or phone or postal contact. There's lots and lots of free options out there, open source ones. So if you just put in CRMs or database into a search, then it will come up. The one thing to check though is that it is um, a European one. Um, and if it's an American one, just check that it does comply with our legislation. There's lots and lots of different choices. You can go for ones that are web-based, you can go for ones that are software packages, um, like Access. So we use Access for our database uh, because it's free with a Microsoft package. There are advantages and disadvantages with that. Um, it's not easy to manage on, we have Apple Macs and they don't particularly like Access. So we have to have another PC that we can access from. Um, but you also need to think about how we're going to limit access to your membership. So how do you store it? How do you make sure that um, it's not open to all members? So for example, we've got two email accounts. We've got one which is storage, which is only open to uh, people that are involved with managing the membership. This is lots and lots of things to think about. Um, and what I would say with your databases is don't rush into it. Um, and how do you, you know, how do you, how to manage that really. Um, so the other thing that we do is we do pay for text messages. A lot of our parents are very, very busy, like all parents, um, and tend to forget when the next support group meeting is. So as you can see, I've given you an example there of the text messages. We originally started off by just using a phone um, when it wasn't, we didn't have that many, but now we're sending out quite large bulks of, of text every month. So we now use a platform. And if you look um, online and you just put in SMS uh, messaging services, um, and there's a variety of costs. I think we pay about 20 pound every three months um, covers hours. So it's quite handy though, because it does remind them about events. It does remind them about coffee mornings and it does allow you to um, just keep on track of that. Okay, so I'm just gonna answer one question that's come in. Um, MailChimp, no, we don't pay for our MailChimp. Our MailChimp is free. Um, as a forum, I'm going to be honest, I, as much as possible, I avoid paying for anything unless I absolutely feel that it's got real benefits to doing it and it's going to save us a lot of time. Um, then we tend to go for free apps. So, majority of the stuff we're going to be talking about this morning are free, if I'm honest. Okay. So, collecting views, lots and lots of different options. Um, We've obviously, as most forums, run coffee mornings and we get lots of feedback through them. But how are we going to be able to contact people that can't attend uh, coffee mornings? So we've got an online virtual coffee morning, um, which I'm not sure why we call it coffee morning, because to be fair, most people access it between 10 and 11 at night. Uh, and that's a closed Facebook group and that allows us to have conversations. We do online surveys and we share those through social media and also face to face events. Um, think about what you want to get out of your surveys, what I'd say. So there's different types. You can have a longer survey where you may use something like um, a survey app, or you may have um, shorter ones, which is, I'm going to show you in a minute, it's one that we use, which is a very visual one, which is really helpful for events um, and also for doing quick polls. So I'm just going to flick out of this in a minute. Okay, so this again is another free app and it's called My Type Forms. At the end of the presentation, there's a list of all the different apps and websites. Um, this is a, a web-based one, but basically you can use it on a tablet. So we tend to use it on a tablet for events. I'll just show you the one that we've done just recently. So when um, we have the issues around the autism and the changes to criteria, we very quickly did a, a quick survey asking parents when what was the age of their children when they got diagnosis? So as you can see, that's how it's created. And then we put in the different ages there. And what you see when you go into it as a parent is you get asked the question and you literally just click on whichever one is the, the appropriate answer. We've also used this really effectively last year. So when we got to sort of uh, February, March last year, and we were setting our priorities as a forum for this current year, we did a very similar thing, um, which I can show you very quickly. Uh, and that just allowed us here. That allowed us just to let people ask, uh, you know, what did you what do they want as our priorities? What do you think is the most important thing? And again, we went through and people could just answer this at events. What the only downside to type form 
is that you can only collect 100 responses for free and then it stops or you have to pay for an account. However, what you can do is you can create multiple. So you will see here, and this will just give you an idea. We have one here, but I've got a duplicate here and you can have duplicate on different devices and then collect the information together. So for example, when we did our event, um, we had three iPads on the go, but all of them had a different one. So we could collect 300 responses before we got charged. So that's just something to think about really. Okay, and the other thing I'm gonna show you in a minute is a bit more detail when we go into the one about SurveyMonkey. So I'm just gonna flick back to the presentation. So, sometimes, particularly around consultations or if you're doing a more in-depth piece of work, you're going to want to collate a lot more information. Um, long surveys are particularly good if you're making responses or reports, such as the funding cuts one that the NNPCF's done. Um, we did one earlier on in the year where we looked at the Get Set services in Somerset that were um, under threat at the time. So, when you're looking at what to use, um, we use SurveyMonkey. It's really important, again, like I said, to weigh up that benefit. Do I go for the free version, which I can access, or do I pay that little bit extra and actually get one that does more things for me? So think about what features are included. What are they going to do about your time management? So some of the survey um, will allow you to share your results visually. And think about how you can use that and also think about how you're going to be GDPR compliant. Um, so how you, you need to explain your surveys, what you're collecting the data for and how it's going to be used so that people are clear. We have chosen to pay for the SurveyMonkey package and we actually pay £400 a year, which sounds a lot. Um, but what I would say is that for us, we found that really useful and I'm going to show you why. So when we go into our SurveyMonkey, it allows us to do analysis. It basically analyzes it all for us and creates it. But it also allows us to create a dashboard. This is a very basic one that we've only just started. Um, but it allows us to show what the responses were all on one page. Um, and it creates a web-based uh, response for you. So basically, it's created this all for me. I can then add in additional text if I want to. I can put in comments from uh, people that are fed back. But you can literally just share that link, which you can have a look because I put it on the slide afterwards. Um, and you can just share that with people and it's done it all for you. That doesn't take you five minutes. You literally just click dashboard, pick which ones you want, and it creates it for you. That's really important because actually an important part of collecting parents' views is making sure you feed back the response and what you've got out of that um, and what they've been telling you. So this enables you to do that really quickly. The other thing that I've just made a note because I was explaining to Rachel earlier and she found this quite interesting. Um, if you pay for SurveyMonkey, it allows you to tag your responses. So you can go into, say for example, we've done a survey on um, health and social care. And I was able to go into those and actually just tag each one. So I could say, oh, that's about autism. That's about ADHD. That's about cerebral palsy. These are parents that are having problems with EHCP. When I go back in at any point, I can literally just pull out those ones. So if I'm doing a piece of work on um, EHCPs, I can pull all of the data that's just about EHCPs and it will just filter and give me those responses. So that saves a lot of time, saves me having to each time go through and manually check them all. Um, literally probably for the responses that we got for that we got about 180 and it probably took me about half an hour just to go through and tag them so it's it saves a huge amount of time and although 400 pounds sounds like a lot of money for us it's actually proved worth it because it's probably saved us more than that in the amount of time that's involved in actually going through and doing it okay I'm gonna flick back again sorry there's a lot of flicking backwards and forwards in this so I do apologize Okay, so as I said, one of the really important things is that we collect a lot of information, collect a lot of views, but how can you present those back to people and how can you make sure that's effective? And also how can technology help you to raise awareness of your forum um, and to make sure that more people get involved and have their voice heard? So we're gonna look at that in the next section. 
Okay, so websites, we all have websites. Um, what I would say is shop around. There's loads of different websites out there now. You can have free ones if you don't mind putting up with the advertising, but obviously be very careful about what they're advertising. Um, you can get uh, your own websites. You can get people to build them for you, or now a lot of forums can probably go and build their own, to be honest. Um, WordPress, Wikis, GoDaddy, all provide templates that you literally drop information into, um, and that, that's really helpful. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit in a minute about the accessible information standard, but first of all, I'm just going to talk about some of the, the things uh, to try and remember when you're building your website. So make sure whatever documentation that you've got is well laid out. There is a real thing about justifying or centering your text because it looks nice and it does look nice, but it's not easy for people to read, particularly if you are dyslexic. Um, it's quite hard to read stuff that's been justified. So, it's, it's, so actually try to stick to keeping it to the left. Sounds strange, but it does make a big difference. Um, don't use all capital head letters for headings. That's something that happens quite often. And also don't use underlining for headings because that makes it difficult for some people to read as well. If you're going to, for your headings, use larger font sides and make them bold. And try to avoid, avoid things like italics as well. If you've got a large volume of information that you're trying to get across, bullet points are probably going to really help with that and break it down a bit. Um, we worked with one young person who had real difficulty with large volumes of information. Um, and he said what really helped him was to break it down into boxes. So I've shown you an example of uh, the Birmingham Parent Care Forum website here. And you can see that's how they've done it. They've made it very clear and they've broken it into boxes. And that makes it less daunting. It doesn't make it feel like huge amounts of text. Um, the other thing is acronyms. Personally, I try to avoid them, although you'll probably find there's loads in here now that I've said that. Um, but if you are going to use them for your very first time, make sure that you explain them. So, for example, if we were to use Somerset County Council, for example, on a website, in brackets, we would put SCC. And then we would be able to use that acronym as we went through. Um, we get, as, as parent carers, we actually get fall into the trap of using acronyms quite a lot. Um, so just be aware of that one. Also, don't use abbreviations or words and phrases that people might not understand. So don't put things like EG, IE, try to use the full words instead, because that helps. So those are sort of the top tips. Um, the accessible information standards is an interesting one. We had questions before this uh, webinar actually took place around whether we have to comply with that. The short answer is no. Um, the standard only actually applies to NHS bodies and social care. So as a forum, we don't actually have to comply with that. However, obviously, we would want to make our information as accessible as possible to people. Um, so by sticking to those sort of top tips there from forums, um, and from our digital team actually at Somerset County Council, that will help you to be able to make make it as accessible as possible. And I always go on the basis of keeping it really simple, less is more, try not to flood people with lots of information. Um, there's nothing worse than going onto a website and reading pages and pages and pages, because in reality, if you're anything like me, you switch off after about half a page text. So just just sometimes also just get somebody else to check it and see what they think and, and just get that feedback again the um closed group on facebook is excellent to use for that so updates and opportunities to get involved so how can we keep that how can we keep that information going to back to people you know they're taking their time to talk to us how do we feed back so Forums up and down the country have used a variety of different methods. There's social media, loads of different platforms. You've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, you've got Instagram, you name it, they're out there. So it's just which ones work best for you. Also consider using a social media manager. If you Google social media manager, you'll find loads online and you can literally just link all of it to one. So you just have to put one post on and it goes over to different platforms. And that again is really time saving. Keep it visual so you catch attention. Consider infographics. Again, not too much text, um, more visual. Look at different media for different events um, YouTube, 
we use Skype and FaceTime and Facebook Live. So um, for our regional meetings, our last regional meeting, we had uh, the Isles of Scilly uh, were Skyping in and Cornwall were FaceTiming in to the same room um, just because of the distance that we cover. I mean, we go literally from, you know, up in Gloucester right down to the Isles of Scilly. So it's massive for our region and it's not always practical for people to travel. Um, so it's quite important to just think about that and think about what, what can you use. Um, we use Facebook Live for our steering group meetings. We were nervous about doing that. I'm going to be honest. Um, none of us particularly like doing Facebook Live, do you, Rachel? No. Rachel's shaking her head here going, no. Um, but actually, you know, we get somewhere in the region of about three to 500 people that are either not always live, but we usually get about 100 live, don't we? And then we get about 400 people to watch it afterwards. So that just allows people another way to feed in. Um, and also videos and blogs. Uh, if you want to have a look at some blogs, South Gloucester, uh, Parent Care Forum have got some amazing blogs on their website, so go and have a look at those. Okay, so the other thing is to consider your newsletters um, or news flashes. There's loads of options out there. You can use Word, Publisher, Pages, all sorts of free sources out there. Literally just Google free newsletter templates and you'll find one. What I would say is find one that is um, really easy to use. We use pages most of the time because it is just a drag and drop information in, which is quite helpful. Um, but also around making sure whatever you choose has the option to PDF it. And that may sound a bit strange, but um, one, it can't be altered by anybody. And two, for the majority of people that are using phones to access data, or tablets it's easier to be able to access um, a PDF not all formats are compatible with web-based um, websites and, and your phones so just think about that okay the other thing that has been used very effectively is um, online graphics so uh, online graphic design really simple ways just to present the information eye-catching some feedback from your surveys, um, create all sorts of things. So I'm going to show you very quickly our Canva. I'm very conscious that I'm rushing through this and there's a lot on here, but you can come back and ask questions at any point. So Canva, as you can see, we use Canva a lot. These are just give you some examples of what we've done. So we have done infographics, which have fed back from surveys. Um, infographics which talk about our membership, how many members we've got, what our reach is, um, and that's quite helpful for when you're at meetings with uh, local authority, etc. We've also done myth busters on what the forum is, what the forum does, and what we don't do. Uh, designed leaflets, um, responses to concerns that have been raised, um, but we also use it quite effectively for events. So this just gives you an example of one of the events that we're running coming up. And you literally, again, just pick what you want from the side and drop them all in. And there's lots and lots of free templates that you can use. The other good thing is that if you go into photos, there are thousands of photos on there that you can use, which are, are stock photographs. So you are not at risk of infringement and copyright. So it's really important that you think about that when you're making your pictures. And this just provides you with lots of free options that you don't have to worry about that copyright risk. Um, again, Canva is a free app. You just literally go online and you can, can do whatever. You can download them in different formats. Um, so it's worth going and having a little play with that. Quite a few forums use that now. Just going to give you an example very quickly of, oh yeah, just before I move on, these are our buttons for our website as well, which we've used Canva to create. Um, this is an example of South Gloucester. So they had their inspection about a year ago. Um, and they used infographics really to encourage people to get involved. Um, they use them also to remind people about their coffee warnings, promote their events, training. Um, if you're on Facebook, go and have a look on their Facebook page because they've got loads of examples of how they've used those effectively. Um, so go and have a look and just get some ideas. Again, as I mentioned earlier, raising awareness. So these are one, oh, just going a bit mad there, hold on a minute. There we go. Um, Infographics, really, just really useful because you can address some of the common myths that we had. Um, we talked about campaigning, 
um, weather forums campaign, whether they work for the local authority. So we use an infographic to do that. Um, and also to look at what your reach is, et cetera. So they're quite, quite effective. Um, you can get a message across very quickly. Um, we also have had um, what groups where we've talked about across the region about what we've used and how we can do that um, and how we can share infographics so that one person creates them and then another person can just tweak them to fit them and that just helps with sharing some of the workload out again. Okay. And then just acknowledging that reading's not actually for everybody. <laughs> um, some people don't want to sit and read pages. Actually, they just like to watch videos. There's lots and lots of examples, and I've put some on here that you can go and have a look at of where forums have used um, videos really effectively. If you go online and you put in free software movies, you'll find that there's loads of stuff on there. So we've used iMovie, Movely, different apps um, and you can also google and find free music samples where people are happy for you to use their music provided you actually give them just credit that the music has come from them and very quickly I'm going to show you this one that we've got from Sunderland if my computer decides it's got a play ball there we go okay. I'm just going to show you about 30 seconds of this So you can see Sunderland have used videos to engage with people and that's worked really effectively for them. So go and have a look on that. Um, when you get the slides from today, it's embedded in there, but there's also some other examples that you might want to go and have a look at. And then managing events. So events for parent care forums are, you know, brilliant raising awareness, get lots of feedback, but they are very time consuming. Um, we can use lots of things that you can use for planning. You can use Excel spreadsheets. There's apps that are free like Asana and other apps that help you to manage that. Booking systems, things like Eventbrite, again, another free app that you can use and that helps you to manage ticket sales and to promote. Um, Sagenda is a new one that we've just started using as a link at the end of this. Um, and this allows you to actually allocate time slots um, we've just done a one where we've had lots of clinics with practitioners and it allowed us to put pre-book all those slots and people could just go on, put their details in and book them and then they got an email to remind them. Creates all your sign-in sheets, does everything for you automatically. So actually that, that helps because if somebody cancels, you don't have to then do all the admin bit with it because it just takes them out and then opens the space up to somebody else. So have a think about that because some of those are quite... Um, they're not always the easiest things to use but once you've got used to them they're fine but it can save you quite a lot of time so it is worth going and having a play and just trying those and a lot of those are free so eventbrite is free sana is free sagenda is free as well so it is worth going and having a little look okay so that was a lot of information to cover in 50 minutes and i probably made your brains go a little bit with that so what i would suggest is the best thing to do is to grab a cup of coffee or tea, whatever is your favourite, or wine in the evening, ladies, um, and look at some of the other forums' websites or social media pages. Go and have a look what other people are doing. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of things out there that are really good. And then just pick one thing. Pick one thing you think that works for me. Let's have a go at that. Let's see what that, whether that works for our families and try it and see how you get on with it. Um, the other thing is advertise for a parent who's technologically minded. Not everybody likes tech in reality, um, but actually just finding somebody who really likes doing that. I'm not keen on the social media, I've got to say. Tina loves it, so Tina does it. And I think that's the thing is playing to people's strength. Um, consider regional sharing sessions. So perhaps build that into your regional meetings and also, uh, also look at the NMPCF Plays Facebook group because there's always lots of stuff going on there. So basically, I suppose my message to you is there's lots of forums out there doing really good work. So just go and we can learn from one another um, and just get ideas from off of each other. So 
we have got some questions which we're going to try and work through. Just bear with me. So I've had one about from Jane. Jane's asking if our key participatory work gets paid and everyone else volunteers. So our structure, we're really fortunate, Jane, because we actually get funding from our local authority and our CCG. And um, because of our CIC status, we've been able to get funding from external partners as well. So we are actually in a position where we are able to pay for some of our work. A lot is still voluntary. Um, but we do we have got some funding so that we can play and I'm happy to have a conversation with you about that one um, and Jane has also asked how much the SMS system costs so we probably send out quite a lot of emails if I'm honest text messages um, it costs us about £20 for a quarter and that covers all the text reminders to go about groups I think we probably send out about 50 or 60 texts uh, every three or four weeks so it's quite a substantial amount but shop around and see what deals are on sometimes you get offers for you know buy a bulk and then you change because to somebody else and just keep rotating if that makes sense where you get good oh yeah and karen just asked earlier on about mailchimp and again yeah we don't pay for our mailchimp um as i said most of the things that we um use are free we try not to pay if i'm honest and there's a lot of free resources out there if you put anything that you're looking for if you put open source you can generally find something that's free that you can use and i think as well from a forum's perspective it's quite good to try out free stuff because if it's not you don't want to spend a lot of money and then find that actually that's not what works for you um, and sometimes you can find something very similar that's free that you can give it a try and then decide if you want to pay for one that's a bit more expensive so there's lots of options um i think no, we've got any more questions coming in at the moment? Okay, um, we're just going to hold on for a minute. Um, I think it's it's fair to say that that was a huge amount of information to go through in 50 minutes. Um, if you do find that you are um, that you you know you want to come back and ask any questions afterwards, that's absolutely fine. Helen's got my contact details, so we can do that. Helen's just you know, just talk amongst ourselves for a minute while Helen sends a question over. Um, I think for a lot of um, forums now, we are all trying really hard to look at how we can use our time more effectively. And I think some of these systems, so like for example, the Canva, you can invite other people in to work on projects with you. Um, and you can use that across forums. It doesn't just have to be your forum, you can use that across the region. So you may find that actually um it's you know you can you create an infographic but somebody else has come in and gone oh actually no that work that works really well um can i borrow that can i use it and you can just send them a link and then they can edit it for themselves mm -hmm. okay so julie has mentioned about the fact that they use go to meeting in the region but the region pays for a subscription that's quite sensible actually because if you're, you know, that's another option to Skype. The good thing about GoToMeeting is um, that you can actually look at documents. It's not always that easy to do that on Skype, but GoToMeeting allows you to work collectively on a document. So that's quite good. Thanks for that, Julie, actually showing that. That's, that's really helpful. So I think really it's about, for me, it's about going and seeing what options there are, seeing what, um, what you can access, what might work for you. With technology, it very much is a one size does not fit everybody. And I think that's really important to remember. So just think about what is going to work for you. Um, and I suppose the other thing to think about is at this time of year, obviously the discretionary grant has just come out. So think about actually, is there anything that you might want to purchase with your discretionary grant um, that you might want to use that for? So. Uh, last year, for example, we invested in a couple of iPads, and that's been really helpful for events, isn't it, Rachel? Yeah, it's been brilliant. Yeah, the weekend was just so much easier because it's automatically all done for us around our membership, so we don't actually have to um, go through and, and do all the manual work that comes with that, because I think that's the other thing, isn't it, with events? It's not just the, the planning, the exhaustion of running the day but then it's all the follow-up afterwards so having stuff that can do it automatically for you really helps so think about that think about um, wh whether there's anything in your discretionary grant that you might be able to access um, 
so it might be that you want to try some of these things out and actually your discretion grant might be a good place to start for that okay i think that is all of the questions that we've had for today but if you do think of any questions afterwards then please just um pop us a line and we'll try our best to answer them for you um obviously as i said some of the more technical ones we'll try to answer um and i think that's probably it from us for today so once we finish the webinar it will um oh hello sorry i'm just about to say that and kenton has snuck in at the last minute anything for use for managing expenses or remuneration yes so kenton good question um we actually do all of our um expenses and remuneration we do it through an excel spreadsheet that we uh, do and then our representatives um put that in that works for us we have tried different ways. I know there are some forms that use the jot form um, and really particularly good at setting up all the logic that goes with it. I've got to be honest, that bit is a bit hard for me um, and our representatives didn't really like it. So it might be work, but that's something to explore and jot form is free. So that's quite helpful. It can do all the calculations and everything for you. So that might be something to, to have a look at. I know um, Ben at Contact, uh, does a lot, you know, does all the forms for our grants and our grant monitoring through job forms, and he's very good at all the logics and stuff. So he's your man for that, I'm afraid, rather than me. But it, that might be an option to look at. Um, as I said at the moment, the forum uses Excel spreadsheets, but I think it would be worth, you know, that's a, that's another option to look at. Right, I'm going to try that again and see if Kenton sneaks in another one just at the last minute. Um, but I think that is it for today. So as I said, if you have any questions afterwards, then please just email them in and we'll do our best to answer them. Once this webinar closes down, there's gonna be a short questionnaire and it would be really helpful if you could just actually complete that for us um, and give us some um, feedback on today's training, really. That'd be great. Thank you very much for listening in, people.